Maelstroms are a bit of a chore to deal with, especially for newer players, as their highly specialized environment demands a more unique approach to ship construction. On that note, meet the Caustic Pathfinder, an orca designed specifically to accommodate these locations. The orca is the middle whale of the Saud Kruger passenger yachts. Despite being a large ship, it handles more like a medium. The orca works well here because it offers ample internal space and one of the fastest non-engineered speeds in the game. The orca is only slightly slower than the mamba, despite being bigger and heavier. Because of the amount of credits, tech broker gear, and engineering, this is a build for intermediate level players who are far enough along to have unlocked Teratani to grade 5, and who are able to chase some specific tech broker goodies they might not have. This build avoids brute force min-maxing, where it is not explicitly required, so not everything is going to get an engineering blueprint. Armor will be military-grade composite, as is typical for any ship engaged with Xeno forces. We will be taking absolute damage in almost all situations, so armor resistance is not important. Engineering will be grade 5 heavy duty, with the deep plating experimental. This will maximize absolute hull integrity. While not critical, this is an important upgrade for survivability within maelstroms. You can run without it at the cost of a shorter survival time. The power plant will be low emissions grade 5, with the thermal spread experimental effect. Under normal conditions, ships try to cook off caustic damage. Caustic generators react to ship heat and will self-destruct if they feel a ship nearby, so that option is out. Since we need to interact with these generators for research purposes, it's necessary to play along and avoid overheating. In my own efforts, I found that caustic generators become unresponsive at about 15% heat from one kilometer away. This is close enough to be able to scan it and deploy research limpets, so there is no reason to get any closer. It's possible to accomplish this with heat sinks, but you will need a lot of them to stay close enough to complete this process, making it impractical. For this reason, a low emissions reactor is mission critical for harvesting operations to go smoothly. The thruster package will be rated 6A, with the Grade 1 Clean Drive Tuning Blueprint. Do not exceed this grade, as the increase in module power draw will offset actual cooling benefits by causing the reactor to emit more heat. The Grade 1 Clean Drive Blueprint does not have any increase in power draw, meaning that thermal reductions actually stick. Pair this blueprint with the Thermal Spread Experimental Effect for best effect overall. This combination will allow the Orca to boost in the high 400 meters per second range. This is fast enough to escape most Thargoid ships and evade their weapons, so it's all that is necessary. The Orca supports a size 5A drive bay, so this build will utilize the Tech Broker frameshift drive. Running cold means turning off any ship system that is not in use in order to lower heat loads. The Tech Broker frameshift drive incorporates the fast boot blueprint, giving it a nominal 2 second boot time much faster than a standard or range-enhanced frameshift drive. The extra jump range also makes getting into and out of the maelstroms easier, as it will allow commanders to skip over Thargoid-occupied systems that might be in the way. Life support will be 6D. The Orca is not a combat ship, so it does not need combat amenities. D-rated life support saves weight and power, enabling higher speeds and lower operating temperatures. Engineering is optional for this module, with lightweight being my recommendation. The power distributor will be size 5A. This offers near permaboost capability without the need for any engineering. The power distributor can be undersized if paired with engine focusing blueprints, though it's a bit of a chore and for minimal benefit. The shielded blueprint is a good fit for the 5A distributor because it does lower power draw. Though, again, the benefit is not significant. No need to chase grade 5 unless you feel like min-maxing. Sensors will be size 4D. Since the Maelstrom offers substantial interference, and things like the caustic generators are not detectable outside of about 1 kilometer, 
Long-range engineering can be used here, since it does not affect power draw, though this does add mass. It's not an essential upgrade and can be skipped if desired. The 5C fuel tank is left unchanged. Optional internals will follow a stealth ship archetype, with modifications specific to work in the Maelstrom environment. This means no shields, and avoiding any high draw modules that cannot be disabled in flight. The size 6 optional internal will be a cargo rack for limpet storage. Running inside a maelstrom requires at least a research and collector limpet controller, though this build will also make use of a decontamination limpet, so we are going to want extra capacity to be very liberal with limpet use. Next is a hull reinforcement package. This is here for a massive boost to hull integrity and is engineered grade 5 heavy duty with the deep plating experimental. It's possible to skip the engineering in exchange for less maelstrom endurance, handy if you are short on materials or don't have the engineer. This can also be swapped for a meta alloy reinforcement package, but will result in less overall hull integrity. A 5B collector limpet controller allows for the greatest possible scavenging range, though at the cost of limpet lifespan. I recommend deploying limpets to directly targeted objects, like caustic shards and corrosive mechanisms. This greatly increases limpet speed, allowing the limpet to take advantage of the controller's extra range. This comes at the cost of destroying the limpet after each successful retrieval. Doing this helps increase your take within a maelstrom by reducing time wasted on slower-moving, free-roaming collector limpets. The 5D Repair Limpet Controller enables faster repair along the edges of the maelstrom. Note that Repair Limpet Controllers aren't very useful when taking active corrosive damage. They quickly become ineffective the further into a maelstrom that pilots fly. Anytime you see a corrosive damage indicator on your hull, decontamination limpets or caustic sinks are a better choice. Repair effectiveness is determined by module size, not grade. Since Maelstrom ships operate alone, there's no reason to equip a higher grade module, since it only affects the repair limpet's range of deployment. A 4E corrosion-resistant cargo rack enables safe transport of corrosive Thargoid cargoes. In most cases, this will be caustic tissue samples. Your ship's computer will automatically shift corrosive cargo to this rack, so there is no need to worry about conflict with pre-existing cargo. The 4E corrosion-resistant racks are a human tech broker exclusive, though the smaller 2E racks can be used in a pinch, should this be what you have available. Additional instances can be installed in the other optional small internals. You will need a total of three 2E corrosion-resistant racks to transport the required five tissue samples to a tech broker for unlocking a caustic sink. A 3B Xenolimpet controller is another key module to carry. Thankfully, it's available on the open galactic market. For this build, the Xeno controller pulls double duty as a decontamination and research limpet controller. The research part of the Xenolimpet controller suffers no degradation in performance compared to its dedicated counterpart. So we get a lot of functionality for less overall effort. In this commander's opinion, it's well worth having aboard. The remaining size 1 and 2 optional internals are slotted for meta-alloy reinforcement packages, though these can be substituted for standard hull reinforcements. I used meta-alloy here, despite its unpopularity, because slotting it in on smaller optional internals is a great way to stack caustic resistance. Since this is not a combat ship, and our main concern is surviving in a caustic environment, these reinforcements are more useful than they would otherwise be. Note that for physical combat with Thargoid ships, standard hull reinforcements with engineering are still the best way to achieve the highest survivability. Our hardpoint package is a set of three gimbaled enhanced AX multi-cannons. Hardpoints are useful inside Maelstrom Clouds for blowing up caustic generators at a distance, allowing for the harvesting of specific resources from the wreckage. They draw very little power and have a shot speed high enough to be accurate against these generators from beyond their self-destruct distance. Utility mounts follow the standard Xeno Operations configuration, 
A Xeno scanner is required to get detailed scans of caustic generators. Without this utility, the research limpet won't be able to subtarget and dock with the part of the generator that it needs to attach to. A shutdown field neutralizer is less necessary inside maelstroms, but does offer some resistance to HUD scrambling effects should you get pulsed by the maelstrom's core. The two remaining utilities can be any combination of caustic or heat sinks, with engineering for increased ammo capacity being highly recommended for either choice. I personally lean more towards caustic sinks, because this build, as shown above, runs cold enough not to need heat sinks for typical use. Caustic sinks are a more effective defense that is usable beyond environments where the decontamination limpet stops being effective. Flight performance is where the rubber meets the road for this build. Some of you may think the Orca an odd choice, but Saud Kruger ships have always emphasized speed and maneuverability over other considerations. Just about any of the medium ships can be adapted to this kind of work, but the Orca needs less attention overall to be made usable. It's not locked behind any rank grinds, is easy to fly, doesn't eat up a ton of engineering resources, and has a manageable rebuy cost. The Orca's excellent handling means that it resists being battered around within a maelstrom, retaining most of its turning and thruster capacity. Even without caustic defenses, an engineered and reinforced hull will withstand caustic damage long enough to effect a safe escape. Its high boost speed provides strong engagement control should any of the patrolling interceptors take notice, and a reasonable jump range means that, in most maelstroms, a safe system is only one jump away, should things really go sour. Taken together, the Orca is about as expensive as a maelstrom build needs to be in order to get the job done. Anything more than this is about individual taste, though big spenders can find some advantages in limpet capacity, armor, and weapons with other hulls. Despite this, the Orca is a great choice for this type of work, and one I doubt any commander who builds it will regret. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.